So the big question is this, how do most agents who don't have access to the secrets that the top agents in our industry hoard to themselves grow and prosper in today's real estate environment? That's the question. And this video podcast is the answer. I'm Pat Hyben and welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. And now for the review of the day. Could get a five-star review from a brother, Phil. Brother Phil says, Pat, awesome podcast. After a few hours, I decided to subscribe. And, and guess what? I am not even a real estate agent. I don't even work in any part of the real estate business. Your energy and knowledge is appealing to any communicator. Keep it up and back off of the coffee. You're making us look older than we are. LOL. Thank you, Brother Phil. Keep the comments coming, guys. I love them. And remember, I eat feedback for breakfast. So give me a one-star review if you want or a five-star review if you want. I don't care. And the more reviews we get, the better guests we get. So please, subscribe first and then leave us a review or wherever you're listening. Rockstar Nation, thanks so much for listening. Don't forget to stay to the end where our guests will be offering a free gift. As you know, all of our guests offer a free gift and all of these gifts can be found on the Agent Success Toolbox. You could find that by going to hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or simply texting the word toolbox to 444-999. That's toolbox to 444-999. I am going to put today's free gift in today's show notes but if you want all of them including gifts from most of our guests that have come on the show just go to the agent success toolbox all right rockstar nation i got a great guest today it is 6 30 in the morning in san francisco <laughs> got up just for this i really appreciate him taking the time to uh, hey, yeah come on the show today bro we're here we're here let's do it hey bro welcome to real estate rock stars and why don't you just uh start by telling everybody a little bit about yourself so they get to know you better sure so i'm located here in the san francisco bay area primarily we service san francisco the main city marin county silicon valley in the east bay area um it is what i would like to call you know, where everybody wants to be right now. It's it's a very cosmopolitan, metropolitan place where I think the brightest minds are kind of gravitating towards here. Uh, there's a lot of space and room for people that are trying to start companies. Uh, this is pretty much where you're going to be able to find a lot of the wealth that you need in order to run the company through venture capital. And so we have a very healthy real estate market. We have a very healthy uh, biotech market. And it's just a place that it's pretty wonderful. We have a very warm climate. We have seasons. It's very close to uh, Lake Tahoe if you enjoy skiing. It's very close to the water if you enjoy going to the beach and surfing. And, you know, we're close to Yosemite National Park. So it's just, it's a really good location, I think. And um, kind of a financial hub for the West Coast. Have a you little lived bit your about, whole life there? Yeah. Yeah. So a little bit about me. You know, I came here when I was you know, roughly, you know, two and a half, nearly three years old, 1985. Um, my family and I, we immigrated here as refugees from Kabul, from Afghanistan. So during that time in, in 1979, a war broke out with uh, the former USSR and Afghanistan. So we basically had to be smuggled out of the country and we lived in a refugee camp for a very long time in Pakistan and and then we were able to get sponsorship to be able to come to the States. So um, that, was a, that was a huge, huge blessing just to be able to take advantage of the opportunities that are presented to anybody, really, that uh, comes to the United States of America, which is probably the best country on the planet. <laughs> so that's kind of a little bit about me. You know, we grew up, you know, very humble beginnings. And uh, my mom and my dad were just, you know, working in the workforce, trying to do everything they can to raise uh, myself, my older brother. And then I have three younger siblings as well, a sister and two younger brothers. So 
Wow, that's a great story. That that's awesome. And so you that's probably one of the reasons where you got your drive from, right? To you, you were like, Well, I'm here, I'm gonna make the most of it. The streets are paved with gold, right? Yeah. So, you know, I think it's that concept of using the the term, you know, the 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 immigrant drive, right? So <laughs> so for us, well for me in general, I think my big why like why I do everything that I'm doing, why I'm working hard and then all that good stuff is kind of because, you know, I, I don't want to take the sacrifices that my parents made, my mom and my dad, that, um, you know, I don't want to take that for granted in any way. And also at the same time, I don't want them to feel, you know, something in their heart thinking to myself, man, you know, we gave up everything that we literally knew, you know, left with a bag and, you know, and now our kids you know, they're not taking advantage of a place like this as much as they would have wanted to, you know what I mean? Like coming here as an immigrant, you don't even know English, you don't know the culture, you don't know what's going on. But then again, you do see that, wow, you know, this place has, you know, opportunity everywhere. You know, you don't, you don't need to be a, a PhD candidate in order to make a living here. You don't need to do that. Like you, as long as you have a pretty good idea and you have the, the knack to be able to actually accomplish it. Like you could do whatever you want. So for me, the big why is like, look, I just, I want to pay them back as much as I possibly can. You know, I'm not going to be able to do that the way that I want to, but at least if I could, I guess, consider myself to be successful or they could consider me to be successful here, you know, that will do justice for them. Yeah, that's so cool. That's so cool. Okay. So let's get to some nitty gritty uh, about your real yeah. estate business. Um, sure. Um, so like how many houses did you sell in the last 12 months? In the last 12 months, probably under 20. Okay. And what's your average sale price? So our average sale price here, my average sale price is 1.6 million. And, um, you know, the average, I think, so just depending on what area within the, in the Bay area you're selling, you know, average in SF is like 1.3 million for two bedroom, two bath. Um, going into the East Bay again, it's like 1.3 million, but that's for a four bedroom, three bath house. And then going into Silicon Valley, the price point actually jumps up a little bit. You get, you know, pretty small amount of square footage, 1200 square feet for like 2.5. And um, so the, the Bay Area, the good thing about it is there's so many different climates, so many different spaces where you could live, where you could, you know, raise a family, love to go out, love to eat. There's so many different things for you to be able to do. And the whole entire Bay Area is like roughly like 45 minutes to get anywhere you need to go. You know, it's not like Los Angeles where we're just dying in traffic and it's so big and so large. Like this, you know, the city itself, San Francisco is only seven miles by seven miles. So it's pretty small. So, you know, depending on what, where your life is and what your lifestyle is like, there's something for you that we're going to be able to help find you that's going to really, really work for you. So the, the price points, they're not cheap. Um, you know, according to like what's going on domestically in the United States. But then again, at the same time, you're getting a huge amount of value for, for where you're going to be living. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. So how many of those were buyers and how many are sellers, would you say? Um, I would have to say probably, you know, 70, 75% sellers. I'm primarily a listing agent. However, we do take on fantastic buyers. So I want to say, you know, 25 to 30% of the business is through buyers. And, and, uh, and that's great. Those, those are great numbers. And, and so um, let's talk numbers because we always talk, uh, we make a joke here. We have something called ECI, which is ego commission income. Agents <laughs> like to talk. I watch some videos. I, I, I know you're real candid uh, because I watch <laughs> their dare videos online about uh, real poignant questions with you. So I appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, of course, okay. I'm happy to share, man. I think, uh, you know, just to be able to be on a show like this is just, it's fun for me. You know what I mean? Like, again, you got to understand where I'm coming from. You know what I mean? Like people to invite me, you know, on Fox business, Bloomberg West, you know, Squawk Box, CNBC, and I'm doing like live on camera news stuff, interviews with you on podcasts, like, yeah, I share all this stuff with, you know, people that are close to me within my family. And I'm like, dude, you're not going to believe what's happening right now. They invited me to come on Fox business, you know, and now this is like, you know, the 10th time I've been on there with mornings with Maria, with Maria Bartiromo. Like this stuff is like unreal for me. You know what I mean? It's still hard to fathom like what is really going on. So yeah, please, any questions you have, I'm happy to 
do my all best. Right. All right, cool. So, so all right with those with those deals. What what was your GCI? What was your gross commissions, or as we say, ECI? What? How- um, for GCI for last year, I think we did maybe about six to seven hundred thousand. Okay. So, and, then, and what'd yeah. you keep of that? What was your profit margin on that? So profit margin, I'll break it down to you guys. So I'm on a split with a company that I work with, right? First and foremost. And then the second split is going to be with Uncle Sam for taxes. Yeah, we'll so, take that. Forget about the taxes. Yeah. 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 Oh, forget about taxes? Forget about taxes. So, yeah. So you, you pay Sotheby's, right? You got to pay them, yeah. what, 6%, right? No. So everyone, everyone at Sotheby's is on different splits, right? Depending on how much you sell and, and that type of stuff. Okay. So Sotheby's takes 6% off the top no matter what. Right. Franchise so, and then, split. yeah, and then you're on, you're on a split. So whatever your split is. So my split right now is at 85%. Okay. So 85 plus six, it's 21, right? 21, so you got expenses. 20, yeah. 21% goes, you know, back to the brand, back to the company. And then of course I have expenses. I have, I have a full-time assistant. I have full-time transaction coordinator. I got a marketing budget. I got advertising. Um, there's so many different things that I take into consideration, just running the business every single day. So, um, I think all in all, we probably kept, let's just say half of that. So 300. Yeah. Some, somewhere around there. And then, and then, um, what was like, what's the biggest commission you've ever got? Um, the biggest commission I got is I'm, I'm actually working on it right now. We're in contract on something that's going to be pretty big. It'll be close to, I think maybe $920,000. Holy be the commission. dirt. So, so that's going to blow your year. I mean, that's going to. Yeah. So, yeah. so I've been, I've been in the game for, let's just say seven years now. Okay. I started in April of 2012. Um, everything is what I like to consider to be a snowball effect. Mm. If you could withstand the test of time as a realtor, there's going to come a point where you're like all of those times that, you know, you've been meeting people and networking and adding to the database and doing a deal here and a deal there, all of that is going to compound into a big snowball. So you just have to be able to be patient, do really good work and let the test of time play itself out. Every single top agent that I've met, every single one, hands down, without a doubt, they've been in the game for 15 to 30 years. Like, and these are the people, I'm not talking small numbers. I'm, t- I'm talking about people that are doing 50 to $200 million every single year consistently. Yeah. So the way that we're structuring our business and what I'm doing is also to be doing, you know, 50 million is just every single year, no matter what. But we're trying to break 100 and then we're going to continue on from there. So for me, I'm not worried about like what's going on in the interim, like this year, or next year. I'm more worried about like, okay, where is the business going to look like in five years when I hit, or like, where's the business going to look like when in three more years, when I hit 10 years in the business. Right. Yeah. So by that time, you know, we're going to be doing close to a hundred million dollars every single year consistently. So the big, the big thing is to be able to withstand the test of time to do amazing work. And that money is just going to be flowing like a waterfall. Yeah. That's just, it just takes time. Because I saw a video where, you know, uh, the, the, you know, they were making a big deal of it. They were like, hey, what's the biggest commission you ever got? And you said 285. And it was like, woo, you know what I mean? And now, <laughs> and now here's one. It's almost a million dollars, which is yeah. a, a benchmark in and of itself. It's too bad it's not, right? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, so you can take let's a find p- out, take a picture find of the out check, a way. You know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Maybe you could add something. Virtual. What is it, a house or a commercial building or? No, it's a house. It's a house. How much is the yeah, house? The house is going to be probably, you know, over, over $20 million. Yeah. But it, so, but it's a double end. So, of course. Mm. So that's the, that's, that's why the commission amount goes up so much. Yeah. Let me talk to you about that while we're talking about double end. There's big, you know, some controversies now with Redfin Direct and where you can make offers uh, without agents. Um, a couple big companies went ahead and put um, 
uh, buttons on their computer so people could buy houses off market for 30, 60, 90 days before they hit MLS. And I know in California, you guys are much more relaxed about double dipping and selling houses uh, without sharing it with the agent community. Talk to me a little bit about your philosophy there and, and uh, why you think it's a, it's a good thing for the consumer and a good thing for the agents. Sure. So when it comes to, look, representing both sides of a transaction is actually very nerve wracking, very scary. Um, it's not something that happens very often, but when it does, I mean, okay, so think I'll, I'll give you like a scenario. Okay. Say for example, I'm working with a buyer, right? And we've looked at every single property that's on the market. Nobody has anything, right? So we call the agents that actually do business and we say, hey, you know, we got these buyers. They're looking for this. Do you have anything that would fit anything like that? We'd love to come see it, right? They say no. So now I'm trying to help these buyers continue on living their life and they want to buy a property, right? So what do I do? So I reach out to homeowners and I say, look, I have these buyers. This is serious. This is not like a realtor, like finangled scam on me getting your listing. This is real deal. If you have something that you want to show us, call me and we'd love to come take a look at it, right? So we go and we take a look at it. Now, that seller doesn't have an agent, right? So the seller is going to say, okay, so how does this work? And I'm going to tell them, look, it works with full transparency. I'm going to say both of you guys in a room. I'm going to show you the comps on what your home is worth. They have an idea on what they're willing to pay for it. And we're just going to do a negotiation right then and there. You guys are going to come to an agreement. There's no, hey, bro, are you telling the truth? Are you not? What's going on? How is this deal really being structured? Do they have more money? Do they not want to pay us more money? Like, are you representing us or are you representing them? It doesn't work that way. Otherwise, it's not a win-win situation. So for me, put them all in the room. We do the negotiation right then and there. Everyone sees all the data. Everyone sees all the facts. Everyone sees the past sales for the last 12 months, 24 months. So then anyone with you know a reasonable mind are going to understand, okay, great. This is what the value of the home is. This is what the seller actually wants for it. Now, how close is that buyer going to get to what the seller wants? And then we find a meeting of the minds. We meet in the middle. And that's how you could do a really good job structuring a double-ended deal, right? Um, if you're going to be, you know, so, and then there's other ways where, look, you're working an open house and a buyer comes into the open house and they're unrepresented. My job as an agent is to do every potential deal I possibly can. So why would I feel like I'm not going to be able to represent this buyer in the best possible way? I will be able to, right? And then my objective for the seller is obviously to get them top dollar in the shortest amount of time. Now, they could accept, reject, or counter any offer they want. So for me, it's just being able to have everybody win, have a meeting of the minds, and be able to represent as many sides as I possibly can because, you know, that's, that's what the name of the game is. That's how you're going to stand here in the next three, five, ten years, continuing to do what you do, and it's because you have a great reputation. People trust you. People love the fact that you did get them the house that they wanted or the deal that they wanted and they will call you back when the time comes for them to do flooring or a kitchen or when the time comes to sell or upgrade or downgrade, they're going to call you back because they remember what you did for them. This is fascinating. I've never heard of an agent that actually does that. And uh, it reminds me of a quote. Chris Christie has a quote that says, it's harder to hate up close. And, and, and the, and basically what he's saying, you know, is, is, you know, you get people in the room and, and they're better at closing the deal, at coming to a, a, you know, figuring out what the common goal is, right? Common goal is to get the house sold, buy the house, sell the house, and, and moving forward. And, and it's kind of what, what you're doing here. And also the transparency is fascinating because you're, you know, I think sometimes agents get in the way. If you look at like, <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like a divorce, I can, right? Look, I, can, I couldn't agree with you more. I can't agree with you more. You know, this is the thing. Sometimes I understand. I'm like, is this guy trying to sabotage this deal? <laughs> like, and I'm thinking in my head, like, what the hell is wrong with you? This is, this is the biggest deal breaker. Okay. Other than time, time is the biggest, biggest deal breaker. Okay. But the second thing is the human ego. 
because as a representative for a buyer or a seller, you're putting your own individual thoughts, your behaviors, your actions into something that does not concern you in any way. You know what I mean? Like say, for example, someone writes me an offer and it's a low ball offer, like $300,000 off of our asking price. Now I can get pissed off and I say, how could you possibly write this offer? I can't believe you would do this. It doesn't make any sense and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like arguing with this person, right? Or I could just say, hey, I'll present it and we'll come back to you. Just take yourself out of the equation. Take your ego out of the equation. Let the seller make the decisions, guide them, advise them, put it in writing and then send it back. What could possibly happen wrong if you did that? Nothing. But you know, this is our problem. We, we get, you're right. We get in our own ways sometimes. And I've done it too. You know what I mean? Like someone will write a low offer or we didn't get our offer accepted or something. And like, I'm just like blowing up at the other agent. What is going on? How come you didn't get this done for us? I can't believe it. We've done three deals already together. You can't, you know, so it's just, it's, it's a very, very difficult balance. I would have to say. Well, well, it's interesting because if you're in a room with a buyer and seller and they've never really met, or maybe they met at the showing once or twice, right? And they're coming there. They're very uncomfortable. It's clear that, that, that Roe is in the room for one reason. You're not in a room to protect the buyer or protect the seller. Or that you're not going to do anything unethical and you're bound by, you know, you're, not, you're going to do the right thing because that's who you are. But mm-hmm. you're, you're in a room to have them come to an agreement. You're not in a room to make yourself look good by getting a free wash and dryer for one side or the other. And, yeah. and, and so then it becomes up to them and how exactly. strong or how, you know, what they want. And I guess in your market currently, it's probably more of a seller's market where, where they're, the seller's like, okay, I want, you know, one nine for this house. Mm-hmm. The buyer's like the comps are one seven and then the seller's like, well, here's the deal. I don't really need to sell, right? Roe contacted me and I'm not pressed. Yeah, and, and, and exactly. So you, you probably prep so, the buyer ahead of time. Like, listen, you're going to pay above market, but that's the reality because if you want to buy something in the MLS, which you hate everything that I showed you, um, that, then you can negotiate. Sure. And that's exactly how it is, right? I mean, everything's an opportunity cost. For the seller, it's an opportunity cost too, right? They're thinking about, hey, where's my exit going to be? Where are we going to move to? What are we going to do with this money? So they might say, hey, you know, we want one nine, but these guys wrote at one seven five zero. Dang, that's not too far for us. Maybe if we can get them to one eight two five, we'll take it and we'll run, you know. And so not have to do open house, and not have exactly, to show it. And exactly, exactly. So stage it. So, but also, you uh, you know, with with that, getting the people in the same room, right? you're right. It's about prepping. Okay. Like, okay, look, this is the buyer demographic. This is their profile. Here goes their financials. We've already vetted everything. This is real. You know what I mean? So then that way the seller is coming in like, and knows that, you know, they're, they're going to have to be realistic with this number. This is something that's going to have to make sense financially. This is not something that, Hey, just because someone knocked on your door and is asking to buy your place off market that they want to pay you $300,000 more. It's not like that. You know what I mean? So, and also when that negotiation comes down to it, you have to do it in a very comfortable environment. They have to meet each other, chat for a little while, get to know one another and understand who they are dealing with on the other side, right? So we like to curate it. You know, there's tea, there's coffee, there's pastries, there's, it's just really, it's just, it's, it's personality types just meeting and, and understanding who each other are they understand the goal is hey i want to sell hey i want to buy so how are we going to come and, and meet in the middle to whereas you feel happy about it we feel happy that we're going to be able to buy it and it works to whereas no one is ever going to come back to me in the future and say hey ro you know you did this whole thing behind our back we didn't know what they were doing we didn't know what they wanted blah blah, blah. and like we feel like we didn't get you know the good end of the stick here no you know what I mean? So that's how you could do a really, really good job structuring a double-ended deal. Um, yeah. But if you're going to do it to whereas like nobody knows each other, you're doing everything through paperwork, you're doing everything through calls, anybody, anybody, whoever it is, is going to feel like, wait, hold on a second. You know, is he representing us, the buyer, or is he representing us, the seller? Hold on. What's going on here? You know, 
did he get us as much as he possibly could? You just leave that up to them to, you know what I mean? You, you facilitate the whole thing. You're, you're the consultant, you're the advisor, you're the person with the data, the statistics, you're the person with the knowledge about what's going on in the market for the next 12 months, next 24 months. And you kind of say, Hey, this is really good for both of you. Tribe of millionaires.com guys, write that down. Rockstar nation got a free special offer for you. Now I've just written a book and it's just been published. Co-authored it with David Osborne. Who's been on this show multiple times. If you don't know David. He is one of the top execs at Keller Williams real estate was personally mentored for the last two decades by Gary Keller himself. And he's in all kinds of businesses, his bio and explanation and everything is in this book. But anyways, David and I got together. We decided to write a book. We called it Tribe of Millionaires. And I guarantee you, it's going to change your life. To find out more, just go to tribeofmillionaires.com. We're going to give it to you absolutely free. Only thing we ask in return is, of course, number one, you pay the shipping. Not a big deal. But number two, that you go on Amazon and write us a review. We're really looking to get an incredible amount of reviews. And because of that, we're giving this book away for free. Go to tribeofmillionaires.com today. It's Team Tober here at Rebus University. And we're running a special for Real Estate Rockstar Nation. This special is going to save you 90% on your team's real estate training. And the cool thing is, as a team leader, you don't got to do nothing. Just put your team to work on this incredible training. Here's how it works. This week is the Certified Team Agent course. Let's say you and your team want to take Jeff Cohn's Certified Team Agent course. Now, Jeff is the number one Berkshire Hathaway agent in the world. And he and his entire team, one by one, helped create this Certified Team Agent course. Where here's the cool part. Before, you used to have to just buy one, and then only the team leader could take it. Now, with Team Tober, you could buy one certified team agent course, and you get nine others for free. That means, basically, you're, every member of your team could take it and learn to emulate what Jeff's team does. You could give it to nine buyer agents. You could give it to nine uh, staff people. Or you could just hand it out to agents that you know. The bottom line is you buy one, you get nine free. That's close to 90% off. It is 90% off. All you got to do is go to hybendigital.com slash teams. This offer is only valid for this week only. Next week will be another course. That's hybendigital.com slash teams. So. Yeah, it's interesting. I think in California too, um, you know, you guys are really relaxed about the agency laws. Like there's, there's some states that, that I've spoken at and, and worked in where, you know, the brokers, right, and the board of realtors, they're hyper-focused on you need to let them know you work for the seller. You need to know they need to sign something that says, even though you're getting both sides of the commission, that you're on one side and all that. And it, and it scares the shit out of, of agents, right? Um, and, and, it scares the shit out of buyers. unethical agents. <laughs> unethical agents, mm. yes. They have, they have cause for concern, for sure, right? But here, we have dual agency. They signed the dual agency document. Um, if you're working with the buyer, you could have an exclusive buyer's agreement to whereas, you know, no matter what they buy, when they buy it, or where they buy it, if somebody, another agent, for example, approaches them at an open house and says, hey, I got something in my back pocket. If you come work with me, I'll show it to you, right? Which happens all the time. But mm -hmm. if you have an exclusive buyer's agency agreement, that is your buyer. You know, yeah. They're contractually obligated to use you as their agent. And then for it's the seller, double obviously- It's double-edged sword yeah. though, because if you have a buyer yeah. agency and then you have the, then you find an off-market for them, then you got to kind of scratch that, right? You got to cancel it and be like, okay, now I'm dual. Yeah. So they've been working with you anyway. So yeah, th that doesn't matter. But what I'm saying is like, you know, obviously your fiduciary duty is always going to be to the, what's going on with the seller. Your job is to make them as much money as you possibly can in the shortest amount of time. And, you know, again, it all depends on the relationship you have with your clients. You know what I'm saying? Like if you have a really good relationship 
if they trusted you enough to let you help them with the sales and marketing of the biggest asset of their lives, you know, I would hope that your guys' relationship is really, really tight, you know? That way, when you say, hey, look, trust me, I vetted these guys. This is like as much as they possibly have. I've already looked at their financials. I've already spoke to their financial advisor. I already spoke to their lender. We're maxed out here. Either take this or just let it go, you know? Then they're like, okay, great. You know, you're not just making stuff up out of, you know, your backside. Are you taking You've, them outside of the room and having little powwows with them? Or, or like, how, how are you communicating with, with, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I know. So, so before, before we actually go and we meet everybody, of course, we have a huge powwow. Then we'll have a meeting. We'll present what they want to present. And then I'll break them up. Then when I break them up, then, then I'll kind of like them. go back and forth. Then you I'll go just, back and you know, forth with them in two different rooms. Yeah, just put them, put them in different rooms. But look, most of the time, it doesn't even get to that, bro. It really doesn't. They, they, trust me, people, somebody wants a house. Somebody wants to sell a house. They will find a way to make it work. And it feels a million times better for the buyer and the seller looking at each other right across the room in each other's eyes, shaking hands and saying, you know what? This sounds like a really good thing for both of us. Let's do it. Like that, that relationship that them two build that, that I'm in the middle of, it really works out really well for everybody. Like I have not had any situations, knock on wood, that have went sour in any way. You know what I mean? Like yeah, these great. are deals that literally right after we do the deal, the earnest money deposit is in escrow. All the contractual like stuff is met. The disclosures are signed. All of our inspections are done on time. Like they, they have a different level of urgency to get this thing done. It's, it's pretty special. Yeah. What a great energy. It definitely is a special energy. Let's, um, all right, let's shift gears a little bit. Now um, you, let's talk about million dollar listing. Why don't we? <laughs> I would love to, man. <laughs> so a million dollar listing San Francisco. Okay. So they, I'll give you kind of the whole entire background story about it okay so i got into the business in april of 2012 i got an email in november of 2012 from the company that was helping them find people to be on the show right so you know i'd only been in the business for a couple months i wasn't doing quote unquote million dollar deals every day for breakfast you know what i mean so they reached out to me and they said hey you know if not you who like, who would be good for this? Could you refer us over to some people? So, you know, obviously word got around the street. They were reaching out to every single agent under the sun in San Francisco and the East Bay, Marin County, Silicon Valley. They were reaching out to everybody, right? And the whole buzz was going around. Oh, my God, a million dollar listing. They're coming to the Bay Area. They're coming to the city. Have they reached out to you yet? And, like, people were like, yeah, they have. And others are like, no, they haven't. And then, um, and then others are like, yeah, they reached out to me, but ah, 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 I would never do a show like that. It's not good for me or my clients. Ah, 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 right. <laughs> so those types of people, those are the ones that I would love the most because they basically were not casted onto the show. So they had to make up anything, you know, to make themselves feel better. But <laughs> so, um, so they reached out to me and then they took off cause they went to Miami actually. They went to go film Million Dollar Listing uh, Miami. So they were gone for two years. So in that two-year period, I switched everything that I was doing to acting as if. You know, I was acting as if I was already on the show. I was dressing like the guys on the show. I was negotiating. I was doing deals. You know, I'd built up my portfolio for sure. I had sold a lot of million-dollar homes. And they came back, sure enough, two years later, and then they called me again. And when the lady called me, I said, hey, I've been waiting for you. <laughs> she got a kick out of that. So she was laughing. She was like, oh, my God, who is this guy? So, so we got to chatting, and we had several phone conversations. We had a one-hour Skype interview. They sent out the entire crew to film me for an entire day, like with listening presentations and buyer's consultations and an event that I threw that night at the company I was working with. And so it was just really, really cool and really fun. And then they went dark and I didn't hear anything back from them for months. And then I got a call and then it was basically, it was the executive producer of the show. And she also films a uh, million dollar listing New York. So she's like, Hey, I'm coming out 
to San Francisco. We're going to go to dinner. And I want to let you know you're one of five people that have made it to the final round. And I was like, wow. I mean, think about that for a second, Pat. Out of easily 25,000 agents. 25,000 and only two years in the business. (laughs) Yeah. So so imagine that. So like out of all those people, I'm in the top five, right? So this just blew my mind, man. So basically what happened is this. So she flew out. We went to go have uh, dinner at this place on Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco. And she's like, look, I'm going to be honest with you. There's, you know, there's four other people. They're really strong. They're really good. Uh, The network liked them. And, um, you know, so we're just trying to figure out what we're going to do here. So I just looked at her and I said, I don't even care if you choose me or not. And she said, what? And I said, look, the fact that I'm sitting across from you, potentially going to be on the number one real estate television show on the planet that's filmed, viewed by 100 countries, 20 million viewers each season, right? I told her, I said, for me, in my mind, mentally, I have already made it. The fact that we're sitting here right now, this solidifies everything that I've been doing, working seven days a week for the last three years. Like, I know that I'm on the right track. I know that whether I make it on the show or not, the trajectory that I'm on is the right one. And I'm just going to keep on doing exactly what I'm doing. And I'm going to get to where I need to go. And she was just like blown away by that. And because in all honesty, I didn't really care at that point if I made it onto the show or not. I was like, dude, I'm doing the right thing. This is killer. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing and I'm just going to crush this game. So, um, so, and then again, she went dark for a good month. And then a month later, she called me. She said, hey, check your email. So there was a 28-page legal document contract for me, for me to be on the show. So... Wow. So I signed it up, <laughs> man. What did it say? I mean, did oh, they, my God. they pay you well, a basically, little bit, right? Basically, what it said is, look, Ro, you're signing your life away. We have final cut on every single thing for the show. If you're down with it, sign here. And if you're not, this is probably not for you. So it took me a whole, probably like eight seconds to sign the document and send it back. So. <laughs> <laughs> you, you went against all the advice you give buyers and sellers. You just yeah, I mean, because, like, I don't, look, yeah, they, you don't care what they pay you. You don't care. It, no, no, it's not. It's not <laughs> look, they're paying me coffee money. You know what I mean? That's not the thing that I'm worried about. I'm not worried about getting paid off the show. I'm worried about building a sustainable consistent real estate brand over the next 10 to 15, 20 years, right? So now for me, like you said, being in the business less than three years, what is the best possible way ever for me to be able to build a brand? Instant credibility. Yeah. Other than national and international television, bro. Like, so, so some people, they're still trying to wrap their heads around like, you know, why would he do a show like that? And they're not thinking business minded. They're thinking very, very small minded. They're thinking like, okay, you know, out of the six clients that I have, five of them are not going to want to do it. So what? Get more clients. (laughs) You don't understand Pat. how many people literally call me monthly, weekly and say, Hey, Ro, when are you guys filming again? Please sell my house on the show. It is crazy crazy yeah that's so it is it has helped my business like grow like immense it's helped my brand grow immense and like you said i walk into a room and people like hey that's that real estate guy from that show you know i don't have to introduce myself to 80 people anymore letting them know what i do it's like you know they'll (laughs) they'll they'll be they'll literally be there'll be a buzz in the room and like oh that's the guy that's the guy that's the guy you know because I'm pretty recognizable and stuff like that just because of the beard and all that, you know? So when people see me like, Hey, I seen this guy somewhere. And then when we start chatting, they automatically know exactly what I do, what type of clients I represent. And they're like, Hey, listen, you know, we have this place in Lake Tahoe, you know, you think you come by and take a look at it? (laughs) Of course, happy to do it. You know what I mean? So for, for people that understand business, that people that understand longevity, they know that, wow, you know, that was incredible. And, 
we would have done anything to be on that show. And trust me, people would have slit my throat to be on that show. Oh, and you know, yeah, they're not, course, they're not, they're not going to tell you that, but man, if I show you the backlash of the hatred amongst the brokerage community, what do you mean for me being on the show? Oh man. Look to your face. Yeah. People are not happy, bro. Well, Look, someone had to do it, right? I mean, there was two other people that did it. So what's the big deal? No, no, no. So listen to this, right? So you're one of three people out of 25,000 representing the entire San Francisco Bay Area climate, landscape, real estate world, right? Everyone wanted to be on the show, man. Everybody. Everybody. Anyone who tells you they didn't, they're lying. Trust me. You know what I mean? Because I know everyone that was in the running to be on it, that was trying to be casted onto oh, it. I know you, everybody. You know the, other two, like, I know, the other two people yeah, that I get know, boofed? Yeah, I know the whole backstory and all that type oh, of stuff. Wow. So it's just like, so when you know that, you're like, wow, man. You know, these people that are saying, oh, well, I've never done it and blah, blah, blah. They're like, yeah, sure, bro. You were trying to get casted on it so hard. It was crazy. So, <laughs> so what, what was it like? Take me like day one that the cameras show up and you're like, what, what was it like? So day one for me was very difficult because one, I'm never used to having cameras around me filming my wife, my brand new newborn child. You know what I mean? Like there was a lot of differences and transitions going on during that time. So it took a lot of time to get used to doing negotiations with cameras around clients, you know, acting really weird because nobody's used to having cameras around, bro. It's like you're mic'd up. You have these two huge cameras, people following you around, you know, we're filming four days a week, Monday through Friday, no weekends. You know what I mean? So it was, it took a lot of time to get used to. And the number one thing that I would say is very important to think about when it came to that show is you can't fake the funk. You know what I mean? No. And what no, I, what I mean, what I mean, what I mean, funk. yeah, what I mean by that is this, you could only put up a facade for so long. We film for 10 months straight. Holy okay? dirt. What? You, t one season, 10 months straight. Yeah, we filmed, to, right? Good God. Yeah. So, so you got to think about it. We're doing this thing in real time, right? And real estate is long time. You know, one deal could take, a month to market, well, a month could, to close. They could be sitting there all week and not get any good footage. Yeah, so so we're filming consecutively, right? So you can't create a facade. It's got to be you. It's got to be the authentic you because over time, you know, people are going to see who you really are, how you are, if you're doing deals, if you're not. They're going to see all that, you know what I mean? So, so what I'll say for like just the other two people that were on the show with me, I haven't heard of them or seen them or know what they're doing pretty much since 2015 for the last 12 to 18 months. Like they literally fell off the map. One of them doesn't even do real estate anymore. What? Yeah. How does that, how does that happen? Like I said, man, you can't create a facade. This has to be, your bread and butter. This has to be what you do 24 seven. You know what I mean? Like, like I said, it's the concept of withstanding the test of time. Did they this put not, you guys like in the, like, like sometimes you see like deals being done between the three people on the show and you think, yeah. what's, what's the likelihood that they would be doing a deal together with 25,000 agents. Do, do they throw deals at you or how does that happen? No, hell no, man. I look every <laughs> single property. If that was the case, I'd say throw some more deals at me. No, bro. It's just, look, did you guys have like deals said, together that were filmed? It's, it's, it's yeah, we did deals together on the show. We did deals together on during that time. Um, if you, again, if you watch that show, every single property that I had listed sold, right. Um, for counterparts, you know what I mean? I heard some very interesting things like, oh, you know, they didn't sell any of the properties and, you know, they didn't, you know, one turned into a lease and it didn't lease. And so I look, I don't know what the other guys did. I have no idea. Um, all I know is every single property that I did literally on the MLS. So, so what you're saying listed, is sold, um, you know, I worked really, really hard to so you're sell those properties did, in that they, 10 months. They, they did a deal and then they filmed it on the show like, oh, yeah, we closed this at 1-8 and then uh, it never went to settlement or the paperwork never got signed. It was all BS for the, for the cameras. 
No, I have no idea. I don't you know don't about know. that stuff. You don't know. That's not yeah. what you're just saying. Yeah. All your stuff settled. Yeah, absolutely. This is all public record. You know what I mean? You go on MLS, you could pull up any one of the properties. You could see what they sold for, what day they sold, you know, all that type of good stuff. So for me, I to be honest with you, look, you want to be the best guy out of the three, right? So I could care less what they did or what they sold or what they represented or anything of that nature. Like I could care less. All I wanted to do was do the best for me and be the shining star out of those three people, right? Like, so if someone's in Moscow, if someone's in Australia, if someone's in, you know, Tel Aviv, if someone's in Sao Paulo and they don't have a real estate agent in the San Francisco Bay area, they've seen a show where they have a choice of one out of three people out of the entire San Francisco Bay area to call to potentially represent them in a buy or a sell. I want that person to be me. So everything that I did on that show, day in, day out, every single day of filming was catered towards getting new business and being, like I said, like that outstanding candidate of like, man, if I was going to do anything in the San Francisco Bay Area, Napa Valley, man, I'm going to call Roe. You know what I mean? So what about like enough, agent referrals? Do you get a lot of agent referrals? Oh, tons, 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 right? from everywhere, from all of our feeder markets, Seattle, Portland, Chicago, Boston, New York City, Florida, like so many different feeder markets come to the San Francisco Bay Area, whether people are transplants or moving here for work, et cetera. So yeah, they call me and they say, hey, Ro, I got this guy. Do you work this specific area? Yes or no? And then after that, then we go from there. So um, so yeah, it's been, it's been really, really positive, man. And so for example, just to give you an idea, after the show is finished, we go on the show. It's called um, Watch What Happens Live. So there's a guy named Andy Cohen. He's kind of, he used to be big time within Bravo as a producer and made shows and all that type of good stuff. Now he has a talk show, basically. And he's kind of one of the big faces for Bravo in general. So the show, our show is filmed by a company called World of Wonder. It's aired on Bravo TV. And it's ran under NBC Universal. So there's three layers for the show. It's really big time. That's why we have the international show. That's why it goes to all these different countries and all that type of good stuff. And they have rights to just be able to show it for as long as they want. And um, so we went on to the show and there's a poll basically where people call in, people vote in online, etc. And it's basically, you know, Andy Cohen asked, live on the show hey you know who's your favorite person on the show who would you use if you ever did anything real estate related and i got 65 percent of the vote what? <laughs> why yeah well apart from my handsome good look <laughs> and this smile i don't know they look people people they're gonna work with who they resonate with people are gonna work with people that they like people are gonna work with people that they have the idea that hey i could trust this person they're looking out for me and my best interests. You know, one of the guys got 4%. <laughs> Holy dirt. The other one got like 20. So look, Pat, again, you have to understand where I'm coming from, bro. I'm coming from like Kabul, Afghanistan, first generation here in America, you know, and then I get onto this show and the two people that are on the show with me, they're like, I, you know, they're just, they're coming from completely different worlds. Okay. So for people like that, ego is really, really big. Right. So then when they see a guy like me winning, getting the popular vote, et cetera, like it pretty much burned a hole through them. You know what I mean? Like after that, we filmed that show in the back in like the green room or whatever. It was just, it was crazy <laughs> because it's hard for people like that to lose to someone like me like it's 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 it plays a big big role believe it or not yeah well you're like a you know your energy is childlike not not in a negative sense in a positive sense yeah. I'm, I'm the same way you know what i mean where you're like you know i'll, I'll if i if you i'm just using as an example if you if you see a, a puddle you're more apt to go running and jumping in it where uh, somebody like maybe one of the other co-players would like walk around it and be like, Oh shit. My, um, uh, my, my $700, uh, shoe got, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and it's just an energy, you know what I mean? And I think people yeah. appreciate that energy 
uh, because the world needs more of it. Right. And you're yeah. like, Hey, I don't care what happens. It's like what you told to the producer. I don't care if I get this or not. I'm just lucky to get this far. Uh, you know, thank yep. you so much. It's such a thankful energy. Yeah. It's just, look, man, believe it or not, I'm winning every day, Pat. I'm winning, bro. Mm. You know what I mean? Like every day, like every day I go into work with my wife, with my kids, with everything going on, like I'm winning. So yes. it's, it's a really good feeling where your only trajectory is up. You know what I mean? Cause I came from very humble beginnings. So for me, I've already seen the complete other side. It doesn't, I'm not scared of it. It doesn't like, I have no fear of losing everything today because I've already been there, you know? So for me, every single day is just, we're just going up, bro. We're climbing, we're climbing Everest and we're going to get there. And <laughs> it's a damn good feeling, man. When you're winning every day, just because, you know, going backwards is like, all right, no problem. I, I'm not going to go backwards, but you know, I've already been there. So I know how right. it is. I can still survive no matter what. Yeah. So right. It's a good, right. it's a you're, good feeling. When you a know, I mean, if you could survive a refugee yeah. <laughs> camp, I mean, right? it's, a good <laughs> feel, it's a good feeling knowing that like, you know, it's, it's just a good feeling. Like, and that's what I'm saying. If you have that type of a outlook on life where no matter what, we're just, we're continuing to move forward. We're winning. It's like, you're not afraid of anything. You're not afraid of other people. You're not afraid of losing deals. You're not afraid to like, let your personality like just shine and do the best thing you can for people. And, um, you know, some people are going to be super attracted to that energy and other people are going to be like, Hey, you know, it's not for me. You're going to find right. whatever works for you. And the beautiful thing is, you know, I work in the shelter business. Okay. So people need food, people need water, people need shelter. They're always going to need somebody like me to help them either buy or sell a place or buy second or third home or just whatever the case may be. So you know, my job's not going anywhere, you know, even with all the technology disruptors and all these different com companies, like, you're always going to need shelter and you're going to need someone that's going to be able to represent you in the best way. And sometimes your computer is not going to be able to represent you the best way. You know well, what I mean? Well, there's, there's, just a lot, not there's a lot of people on the, uh, on, on the, uh, they come on the show now that are saying the same thing. They're like, Hey, you know, it's not about technology. It's not about um, it's never been you know, it's disruption never been or whatever. It's all about a face-to-face -face relationship. And, and that kind of leads to this question is like you recently or, uh, you know, switched to Sotheby's. Tell me about that. Why'd you do that? And, and, um, and what have you found there with Sotheby's? Yeah, I'd love to talk about that just because I think it's very important. Okay. So what you're trying to do, if you're trying to be in this game for the long run, right? you have to think about strategic partnerships for what is going to be the best for you for where you're trying to go, right? You got to reverse engineer that. So I started working at a boutique company in San Francisco and I was there for two years and seven months, two years and six months. The reason why I left that company is because they didn't do a million dollar listing with me. They said, Hey, Ro, if you want to be on the show, it's great, but you know, we're not going to be on the show. Why? Um, fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear of how it's going to be, you know, accepted or not, or just fear, basically. Because it would have given them press. Because you would have been, you know, row at ABC like, Realty or whatever. Yeah. So, again, you got to understand it's this. Just asinine. Stuff it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. You just, you just have to understand it from a business perspective. For people that don't understand it from a business perspective, other agents, they, agents they think it's just, they, they think it's television. <laughs> Look, you know, Howard Lorber, who's the ch chairman of Douglas Elliman Real Estate, he has Josh Altman in LA. He has Frederick and Luis in New York City. Three agents on the show where he literally, he recruits and he scouts people that are going to be on the show. And he says, come to Douglas Elliman. I will take care of everything that you could possibly ever need ever. Because he understands the brand. Yeah, and I will do everything. He understands the show. Yeah, I will do. To exactly. Get you as an agent on the show. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You. It's probably like one of his most brilliant business uh, 
things that he's done, endeavors sure. that he's done in his lifetime. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like, and get, I and I admire get someone him on the damn show. That's crazy. Yeah, exactly, I admire him because he's such a smart person, a smart business mogul. You know what I mean? A real estate mogul, really, he is. So in any case, so the company that I worked at, they said, "Hey, we're not going to do the show." And I said, "Okay, sayonara." So I went to Coldwell Banker Previews, which is the luxury division of Coldwell Banker. The reason why I chose Coldwell Banker is because none of the other companies that are on the show in LA, New York, or Miami are in the San Francisco Bay Area. But Madison, who was on the show in Los Angeles, he worked at Coldwell Banker in Malibu. So I said, oh shit, I remember he was on the show. Let me reach out to them and see if they'll do the show with me. So I reached out to them. I had to you know, talk with their lawyers, their, their higher ups. And I said, hey, guys, I would, you know, I'm on the show. Here's my contract. Will you guys hire me? Let me work at Coldwell Banker and do the show with me. And they said, you know, after it took them two weeks to go through their legal and all that stuff. But they said, hey, we're in. We'll do it. You could film our logos. You could film in the office. You know, again, it's that show is a disruption amongst agents. Because if they see a company favoring someone like me just because I work there, all the other agents that are producing in the office, they get pissed off. They're like, why are you giving him special treatment? Just because he's on the show and he's helping with the company. Look at us. You know, we're working here, you know, day in, day out for this brand. So, so they had to be very sensitive with that stuff. So what I thought to do is like, look, I don't want to have any enemies within the brand, within the brokerage. Why don't I just collaborate and partner with everyone that I possibly can? And then when I did that and I sent out a, a, a company email saying, hey, guys, anyone who wants to do anything with me on this million dollar listing show, let's go. I'm in. Oh, my God. The response was so good. They were like, well, if he's going to include us, great. You know, awesome. We'll do whatever. Yeah, let him film in the office whenever he wants. And so it was really good. So I was there until the company Keller Williams opened up in San Francisco. So they opened up a brand new market center. They'd never been in SF for years upon years. And they offered me a phenomenal like onboarding package. So I was there for two years. I moved over to Sotheby's International Realty. Um, I work for Golden Gate. Golden Gate Sotheby's International Realty is the number one Sotheby's in all of California. Do the math. It's worth every single dollar. That's a title of a comment that I got on my certified listing agent course from Rebus University. It's from Bill Reig. This is what Bill says. Bill says, looking to take your listing presentation to the next level? I've closed 100 appointments since I took Pat's certified listing agent course. Five appointments, five new clients, 60 days. Boom. Do the math. It's worth every single dollar. Thanks, Bill. But listen, guys, I am offering this to you if you haven't already taken it because so many brokers and teams make their agents take it before they do a single listing appointment. But if you haven't taken it, you can go to rebusuniversity.com and get it now. Now here's the thing. For 30 days, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you that course. I'm going to give you the buyer agent course, which teaches you how to close every single series buyer that calls on the phone or emails. The certified team agent course is taught by Jeff Cohn, one of America's top agents on how to build a team from zero to hero to hundreds and hundreds of units every year, step by step. It's like a 12 hour course plus seven other courses. Yes, you heard that right. All for a measly 127 bucks a month. If you were to go to Rebus University and buy these courses individually, it costs you over $10,000. But today, if you go to futureofrealestatetraining.com, that's futureofrealestatetraining.com, you'll learn what Bill Reek did, which is how to close 100% of the listing points you go on. Quite impressive. And you'll learn all the other incredible details provided in the 11 five-star courses that are offered. Yeah, it's like all you can eat bizarre. You go in now and you pay 127 bucks a month. If you can eat all 11 courses in one month, that's all you pay is a buck 97. This is a bargain, guys. Get it now. Futureofrealestatetraining.com. Hey, real estate rock stars. This is Pat Hyben. And before we jump back into today's content, I want to tell you about an extraordinary offer from an extraordinary company. I'm talking about my 
Outdesk. If you haven't heard of my Outdesk, basically they are a virtual assistant company, a VA company that specializes in virtual assistants for real estate agents. Yeah, I'm talking about transaction coordinators, marketing assistants. I'm talking about ISAs, inside sales agents at Prospect, thousands and thousands of seller leads and buyer lead follow-ups. I mean, these guys are trained in this stuff specifically. You're not using a company that doesn't know or understand real estate sales. Four out of five of the top teams in the US use my Outdesk for their virtual assistants. And because I know the owner, Daniel Ramsey, I've known him for over a decade, and I know how awesome and incredible this company is and how it saves agents thousands and thousands of dollars every single week and makes them thousands and thousands of more every single week. We are gonna give you a $400 coupon off of your first month of a virtual assistant and give you a free book entitled Scaling Your Business with Virtual Professionals. So you can like read it and look into it before you decide anything. It's called Scaling Your Business with Virtual Professionals. And you can get it real easy. All you gotta do is text the word HIBAN, H-I-B-A-N to 31996. That's H-I-B-A-N to 31996 and download your free book, Scaling Your Business with Virtual Professionals. And don't forget to mention also that you get a $400 discount, which will give you a coupon for that when you download the book. Thank you guys, and I hope you enjoy and make a ton of money using my Outdesk. Wait a minute. Now, did. Uh, how, oh, so you, you worked at Keller Williams for two years. Yes. Okay. And then, and so they offered you like a signing bonus or just, you know, no, just... not even a signing bonus. They just offered me a phenomenal comp package. They say, look, you know, we'll take care of, you know, your split is going to be awesome. You're going to enjoy it. You know, you're going to be involved in, in running the company because I was part of their, their leadership team and like building the brand and getting it recognition. And all. it was good. It was good for my growth because it helped me learn how to build a team. Right. Ever since yeah, I've absolutely. always started, oh, I've been a solo, okay. I've been a solo agent ever since I've started in real estate. Right. So okay. this gave me an opportunity to learn how, how the actual business and the brand runs. So, so it was that like, was great. It's like economic and, and also um, a little bit of a, a you know, we're going to teach you and Cobble Banker can't teach you that. Exactly. And- Cobble Banker is too cool. big of a brand. Think about it. They did $190 billion in sales, you know, last year. It's too big of a company, right? So Keller Williams opening up the market center with these people in San Francisco was a really, really good testament on showing me, you know, what does the brand advertising budget look? What does the marketing budget look like? How do you run the actual company? How do you recruit? How do you build a team? Right. It taught me invaluable things. Now that, that you have me a, for a the long name. run. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be fantastic. Yeah. So now I went over to Sotheby's, Golden Gate Sotheby's International Realty in August of last year. And now, this took a lot of thought, you know what I mean? Because I'd been in the business now for six years. I've been doing a lot of deals, really, really built up my reputation, my brand. And I thought to myself, okay, who am I going to creatively align myself with for the next 20 years? Okay. I'm in this business for the long run. This is my career. Who, who am I going to work with that I could work with for the next 20 years and not even blink an eye saying, wow, you know, I made a really good decision doing that. So it also has to do with where my brand and where my business is going, where my price point is going, what type of clients I'm serving, what type of referrals I'm getting from other parts of the nation and internationally as well. And there was only one company on the face of the planet that met that objective, that challenge, that growth model, and it's Golden Gate Sotheby's International Realty. So for me, I just had to do some introspection. I had to really, really take a step back, take a step out and see it from above and see where is my brand going? Who am I going to creatively align with that's going to help me continue to grow, that's going to push me, that's going to challenge me every single day? And going to give me the tools that I need that are going to be able to help me represent my clients in the best way, help my, help my properties get the massive amount of exposure that they need, 
and really just be good for my business. And that's why I made the move over to Golden Gate Sotheby's and National Realty. Okay. Okay. Well, it, it's always fascinating because there's so, there's so much disruption and there's so many companies out there nowadays um, and, and agents are getting bombarded with different ideas and different thoughts. And it sounds like you, you know, you had good experiences at all your companies that you've been to. Yeah. And it sounds like you're done jumping at this point, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, no, I think, you know, it's, I think it's good for people to be able to taste things, right? You got to be able to experience what does it mean working at a brokerage that has, you know, when I started at the boutique company I was working with, they had 84 agents. You know what I mean? When I left, it probably had 280, maybe 300. And then I go over to Coldwell Banker, which is a powerhouse that has, I mean, I probably can't even count how many agents they have, how many offices they have, how many different international locations they have. Then I go to Keller Williams, which has the largest agent count in the world. I think they have 175,000 agents you know, across their market centers, working for that brand. And then I came over to, you know, Golden Gate Sotheby's International Realty, which has 22,000 agents in 72 different international market centers. This is the only company, in all honesty, that is a truly international company. You know what I mean? And they sold over $100 billion dollars of property last year so for me it just it makes a hundred percent sense for my personal brand and they're, they're, those are all franchises the, right the sotheby's is a franchise they're they're um they're affiliate partners many of them and then um and then there's you know the corporate at Realogy, nrt owned offices as well which so are like kind of like cities. they just pay like a licensing fee so it's kind of like you, you open up your own little boutique right yeah i don't i don't really know like the inner workings and stuff fee, maybe yeah. yeah i don't know the inner workings of how how that works like with the actual um yeah the different offices and stuff like that but i'm sure i'll find out at some point but um hmm. yeah so just i the affiliates and the Realogy nrt offices and stuff like that i they work really good hand in hand and it's probably, it's probably and, easier. I'm trying to figure out why you would have 72 international offices that succeed because a lot of international offices are, have trouble fitting a square peg in a round hole because of expenses and the way they do commissions. And, other sure. and I think with Southern, yeah, so because it's such a we, small like rental space that they're able to save money. You know what I mean? Like the, the overhead expense doesn't have to be huge. You have to buy this huge rent out this huge office and cater to all these agents. You could have this little slither space and be like, this is, this is our model. This is, am I making well, sense? Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. And also, so we just got back from the global networking event, which is in uh, Vancouver, Canada about a month ago. Okay. So they said a hundred million dollars of our sales were domestic U S $12 billion of our sales were international. So that kind of puts things 12 into perspective. Billion. 12 billion. Holy dirt. Okay. So that kind of gives you an idea on what that is. And, um, you know, with, with that in mind, it kind of helps you put into perspective how much volume we are doing truly internationally. Um, and also how much volume we're doing domestically in the U S so Sotheby's international realty in general, I think this is a brand that you don't start out at. You know what I mean? It's not a company for new agents by any means. If you think about how many agents they have and you divide that by the annual volume, they are looking for raw producers. They're looking for real deal real estate agents that get it, that their businesses are growing, that they could grow with them. They're looking for real producers. They're not looking to train you. They're not looking to coach you. They're not looking for anything like that. Like, I think that's why you work at a couple of different companies. You really get an idea of kind of what you're doing and if you're going to be a career-based realtor or not. And then you go and you apply to work for a company like them. And that's exactly what I did, right? It took me a lot of time to build my portfolio, to build my resume, to get into a mental place to be able to work with these types of agents that are doing 100, 150, 180, 
$200 million a year in volume. Like you do this for a living and you interview a lot of people. So I think you're going to appreciate how difficult it even is to do $50 million a year. Like that number right there is just huge to be able to do $50 million a year. Now to be able to 3X, 4X that, holy smokes, man, you are running a stellar business if you could do those kinds of numbers. So for us, we're just trying to get to 100. And then when we get to 100, then we'll, you know, we'll change the goal. Well, that's awesome. And I, I could tell, Ro, that one of the ways you're getting there is uh, by saying yes to a lot, right? You said yes to this podcast, which I really appreciate. Sure, you say yes course. to Fox News and you say yes to pretty much everybody that asks you to come on um, TV, radio, whatever uh, you're a yes man for because you're more of the mindset of like a Douglas element now, right? I mean, any advice sure. before we wrap this up to people who, you know, want to build their brand through media? Yes. One, the most important thing I would say to everybody out there is be patient. You have to be self-aware of who you are, what you really want, what your lifestyle is like, you have to be extremely patient because this is a long game. You can't think about building a brand, building a social media presence, you know, getting your Instagram to blank amount of followers, building your Facebook up to thousands of people that, you know, follow your page. You are not going to be able to do that in a short amount of time. Like think long run trajectory, be patient, be self-aware, have a lot of, empathy for what people are going on in their lives where are they at in their lives that's why for example if you reach out to me on social on instagram facebook twitter on anything you're going to get a reply from me you know i can't tell you how many people per day are like hey you know i'm going through this what should i do or what advice do you have for me on getting my license or breaking into the market so for me it's just giving back man Give back as much as you possibly can. It's not going to take anything away from me giving a minute or two minutes of my time and my life to answering somebody's question and then being like elated and excited to continue moving forward with this plan that they had or whatever the case may be. It's like, you know, give. <laughs> well, you know, I can see. Give. I mean, you, you got to you you so give. So much was given to you, right? I mean, like, yeah, you're you like, got to oh. give. No, but you got to give to receive, dude. The first book that I wrote, read um, like for self-help, for all that type of stuff, was a book by Zig Ziglar, and it's called Over the Top. Maybe 2004, something like that. I don't know. I don't even remember. But every book that I read, I write the date that I completed the book in. So I know that it was a long time ago. But the number one gem that I took from that book is, and I remember to this day, he said, you got to help as many people as you possibly can get to where they want to go and in return you'll get to where you want to go and that in all honesty has played out for me in real estate i've been doing everything that i can to help people answer questions do whatever i possibly can because i'm trying to go somewhere too you know what i mean so if i'm helping other people in other markets in chicago boston connecticut south florida new york city and they have these questions like hey i'm in this situation with this seller or this buyer what do you think I should do? And I say, Hey, look, you know, from my experience, this is what I've done and it worked, or this is what I did and it didn't work. You know, hopefully they close that transaction. And then later on when they have a referral, they're like, no brainer. I'm sending this to row because he helped me close this $3.8 million deal. Whereas no one else would even take my calls. Wow. That's awesome, dude. Well, that's, we're going to wrap with that. I mean, that's you get by giving. I mean, there's no better piece of advice and, you guys heard it here, and, and I can guarantee you, uh, Ro, you're going to get a lot of feedback uh, from our audience here. And, guys, I'm going to put all awesome, of Ro, Ro's uh, 
all of his social media. I'm going to put uh, all of his links. I'm going to put his direct email so you can send him referrals in San Francisco. <laughs> Everything. Pat, you're the even. best, man. <laughs> I had so much fun doing this. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was um, a blast. Uh, tell, real quick, what about your free gift? I know uh, you're going to give us a business plan. Tell me about that real quick. And guys, yeah, I'm, going to put so, his, I'm going to put this on hybendigital.com backslash row Habibi. So it's yeah. H-A-B-I-B-I. So, yeah, so what I want to give to the people is this. If you are planning on doing this for real, if you are planning on making this your career, if you are planning on doing this for the long run, if you don't plan, you're planning to fail, okay? Because there's an 87% chance that you're not going to make it through year one, 90% chance you're not going to make it through year five in this business, right? So you got to take the bull by the horns. You got to get super serious. So. I just started doing an actual formal written business plan maybe for two years now. And in those two years, every single year, my business has doubled. So what I want to do is I want to share a business plan with you guys. One's going to be a template on how to do it. And then the other one's going to be the blank business plan. Do yourself a favor to actually go through with putting together this plan. So um, if you can do that, it'll be so beneficial for you. And I'm going to share that with you guys. So take your time, ask me any questions offline, but please do the business plan. That's awesome, guys. So again, hybendigital.com backslash row, R-O-H, Habibi, H-I-B, H-A-B as in boy, I-B as in boy, I. <laughs> I blanked on that one. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Ro. I really appreciate you coming on, boss. And uh, listen, best of Pat, luck to you. And uh, I appreciate hopefully I'll you, man. We'll meet you in person. We'll break some bread. There we go. I'm into it. Let's do it, man. Be well, guys. Take care. I want you to think about the word toolbox. What is a toolbox? A toolbox is a box full of tools that you use to build something great. At Real Estate Rockstars, we've created our own free toolbox. So everybody that comes on the show as a guest brings a tool with them and we plow them all into this toolbox and we give it away for our viewing audience to basically use as they wish. Everything we put in there is an actionable item that can be downloaded, can be printed, can be used immediately. And we got things like scripts and dialogues, checklists for teams, checklists to keep agents accountable, referral forms that are filled out at settlement to get referrals by your buyers and sellers. Everything you could think of that you could use on a regular basis about real estate is included in this toolbox. And it's helping agents worldwide sell more houses and make their jobs a lot easier and processes much more efficient. And the thing is, it's absolutely free. All you gotta do is go to hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or text the word toolbox to 444-999. That's toolbox 444-999. Do it now. Rockstar Nation, thank you for listening to Real Estate Rockstars. Listen, I need a favor. If you find this free content helpful, if you find our downloadable items from each guest helpful, please, I need you to pull out your pointing finger. Yes, the one finger that points at people and hit subscribe. Yes, subscribe. The more subscribers we get, the better we look in the ratings and the easier it is to get guests like Robert Kiyosaki, Barbara Corcoran, all the players that are on million dollar listing in the different cities. All that stuff makes it easier the more subscribers we get. So please subscribe. And listen, there's a lot of places you can leave comments. There's a lot of places you can like. We're on Facebook. We have an Instagram page. Instagram page is I am Pat Hyde. Been. The Facebook is Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Feel free to leave us comments there. The most popular form of commenting seems to happen on YouTube. Yes, for whatever reason, it's a, a very open environment. So just go to YouTube and go to Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Leave us comments there. Some of them we will read on the show. We love your feedback. So thanks, guys, and I hope you are having a great day. Oh, and also, listen, if you're going to subscribe, and you haven't already left a review on iTunes, please do that too. 
Have a great day, and thanks so much, Rockstar Nation. I really appreciate you.